the police department was beginning to develop a reputation in some parts of this country um, and, and viewed as, as a, um, a p for police brutality. 1968, there was a march on the school, school board of Philadelphia uh, for, to demonstrate and to try to bring African-American history uh, as a part of the core curriculum of the Philadelphia School District. And it was Frank Rizzo who led the charge. He didn't just send police officers into that crowd. He led the charge. He came in himself, you know, with his, uh, you know, baton and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, I understand he did some swinging. I think with all of the turmoil uh, and potential turmoil that was swirling around the city in the 60s, it generated a lot of fear, an awful lot of fear. People didn't know what to do uh, after, you know, uh, the issue on, on, on Columbia Avenue or uh, when King, the night the King was assassinated, and how people, what the reaction was going to be in, in the African American community specifically at that time, uh, as you focused on it. And, and I think that in the minds of some, Frank Rizzo probably brought them some comfort. Uh, the liberals in Philadelphia who had a social conscience and who were not afraid to speak out and who demonstrated that social conscience, they were a threat to a lot of people. I mean, this wasn't just about the African American community. There were well thinking whites who, who uh, who really believe that, you know what, we need to be going in a different direction, both politically and socially and economically. And that was a threat to the status quo. Um, and I think that, you know, Frank Rizzo was that, that, that protector. You know, I'm going to make things, I'm going to keep them in their place. He wasn't just talking about African, African Americans. He was talking about others in this city who had a more progressive view of things and who wanted the city to move uh, in, in a much more progressive manner.